Ed Yoho is joining us. He's a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. You're also the chairman of the subcommittee on Asia and the Pacific That's region. Right. You spent a lot of time over there, Congressman. Thanks for joining us. Uh, under what conditions, Congressman, would you support a U.S. preemptive strike against North Korean nuclear facilities? Under what conditions? I guess if they went ahead and attacked one of our bases, uh, threatened our military down there more so than they have, or they fired on them, uh, or fired on uh, USS Carl Vinson fleet over there. The nuclear test, let's hope he doesn't do that. If he does, I think there will be a response. We'll just have to see what he does. In fact, what we do is dependent on what Kim Jong-un does, not what we do. So Kim Jong-un needs to travel very carefully here, and let's hope we can get to diplomatic relationships and have that dialogue and bring regional partners in there, China, Japan, South Korea, and bring these partners together because we all have a vested interest in this. But Congressman, uh, they, they've already had five nuclear tests. Uh, the, this would be <clears throat> their sixth. Why do you think a sixth nuclear test would provoke a U.S. military response? Well, I'm not saying it would. I think hopefully we can get to a point where Kim Jong-un doesn't do that. Uh, again, um, I've talked about this before where who's trying to attack or invade North Korea? There's no need for this guy to have nuclear weapons uh, in the 21st century. Um, what he's doing is destabilizing not just the Korean Peninsula, but he's destabilizing the Asia Pacific region, which accounts for 85% of the trade. And so all countries need to come together on this because this will upset the world economy. And that's why we went ahead and put them on uh, recommendations, put them back on the uh, state sponsor of terrorism so that other countries will come in here and help put sanctions with any country doing them, uh, business with them, along with China and secondary sanctions against North Korea. And if we, if we hit them in the wallet, I'm hoping Kim Jong-un and I, our diplomatic corps will be able to negotiate, but not in the failed negotiations that we saw under Bill Clinton, where they allowed him to get the nuclear power station started and under George Bush, where they took him off the state sponsor of terrorism, and North Korea never held uh, firm to the word or their commitments. This is something that I think with what we've seen in Syria with Donald Trump, this president, uh, that he is strong on resolve. And with the previous administration uh, using the patient strategy of um, uh, drawing red lines and not backing those up, um, that won't happen under but, this president. I'm but very, when you look I'm very at, sure of that. When you look at, you've spent a lot of time studying Kim Jong-un, the North Korean uh, leader. Uh, he's pretty much unpredictable. <laughs> How dangerous is the tough talk given his unpredictability? Well, again, I think if he looks at the example of what President Trump did with Syria with the 59 Tomahawk missiles and then uh, floating the USS Carl Vincent, uh, the Armada over there to show the strength of the United States and the willingness to uh, engage. Um, I'm hoping again Kim Jong-un will look at the, at the scenario in front of him. Either he continues down a path that has no favorable outcome for him and the North Korean people or he does a pivot and says, all right, how can we stop this escalation and the provocations? When President Trump was out on the campaign trail and you heard him often say uh, all sorts of things, but he suggested on a few occasions that a nuclear South Korea or Japan, for that matter, could contain Kim Jong-un. Uh, he also said he'd be open to sitting down with Kim Jong-un. Do you think he should revisit those ideas now that he, he's in the White House? Yeah, I think he should revisit those. I don't know if that's the way to go. Um, you know, every nation has a right to defend themselves, but to go nuclear is only going to cause a nuclear arms race in areas of the world we haven't had it, and I don't think we need that. And that, again, is one of the reasons that we're so adamant about getting the THAAD system deployed in uh, South Korea as a defensive mechanism only and uh, to show that we are willing to work with our allies and protect and uh, stand with our allies. Do you have any special and insight? In mind, we have 28,000 troops there. Yeah, and they, they're right along sorry, the demilitarized zone. They're right uh, in harm's <laughs> sure way, are. clearly. Uh, uh, do you have any special insight, Congressman, into why this latest North Korean uh, ballistic missile test over the weekend failed? No, I don't. I've heard uh, conjectures and speculations. Um, but what we have to understand is that every failed 
test is also something that they use for the next test to be successful because they'll find out what didn't work, whether it was something that blocked that or interfered with the signal or if it was just something faulty in the electronics. You know, when they go back and study that, and what I understand is we're not sure if that wasn't an ICBM that has a range of approximately 7,500 miles where it could reach the mainland of the U.S. And if you go back to what Kim Jong-un said, he's willing to, to attack not just South Korea or our bases, but also the mainland of the United States. And let's just hope he doesn't carry on. And like I said, our response is going to be, or it'll be dependent on what Kim Jong-un does, not what he says, but his actions. And so our response will, I'm sure, equal that. President Trump uh, in recent days has been praising China for cooperating on North Korea. How would you assess uh, President Xi uh, of, of, of uh, China, <clears throat> his moves so far? I think President Xi Jinping um, has a very pivotal role, and with him placing uh, roughly 150,000 troops on the uh, eastern border or the western border of China, right there between China and North Korea, shows a strong response from their president uh, of China. And I think that sends a strong signal to Kim Jong-un. Uh, the other thing is his cooperation, hopefully, with uh, putting, uh, allowing these companies that are doing business with North Korea, uh, helping us put the sanctions on the companies secondarily to where they're excluded from the American or the, the world financial banks. This is something he can come and help us with. If you look at uh, what he's done previous to this, he was uh, retaliating against South Korea for their acceptance of the THAAD system in South Korea. And he was really punishing the wrong Korea. He should be going after North Korea and helping us come together. He's done a good thing by uh, preventing any more of the exports of uh, coal from North Korea to China. Let's hope he stays true to his word on that and that they help us bring this to a peaceful resolve. Congressman, stand by. There's much more to discuss. we got to take a quick break. Yes, we'll resume our conversation right after this. We're back with Congressman Ted Yo of Florida, one of the Republican lawmakers who's faced some angry constituents at some uh, town hall events. Uh, Congressman, very quickly, I know you faced some, uh, some criticism from some of your constituents for failing to deliver on your promise of repealing, replacing Obamacare for opposing President Trump on the GOP health care bill. Uh, but the president has said he'd like to try again. Is there a scenario in which you'd sign on to a new health care bill? Are you any closer to working out a deal with him? Absolutely. As far as signing on to a bill, absolutely. And, you know, I commend his leadership for asking for a delay of the uh, American Health Care Act that the Republicans put forward and the courage of Paul Ryan to, to remove that bill at the time because there's a lot of motion behind that. The best way forward, uh, Wolf, is to do 100% repeal like we told the American people and we got elected on. Everybody in the Republican House, uh, in House and Senate said they were voting and running to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. This bill did not do this. And so if they come out with a clean bill to repeal, we can go on with the replacement. But they say they, the they, say they have, have to do it. They effort. say they say, Congressman, they have to do it simultaneously, repeal and replace one piece of legislation. No, not not at all. It doesn't have to be. There's no law. It doesn't saying have that. to be, you but that's what they say they want. Well, to repeal it and have a future date, Mo Brooks out of Alabama has got a great bill that repeals this and it doesn't go into effect until January 1st of 2018. That would give us eight months to come together, Republicans and Democrats, to have a bipartisan effort instead of doing a lopsided like Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats did in 2009 or what we're doing with no Democratic input. Let's do this not for a party, but let's do what's best for Americans so that they have great quality health care at an affordable uh, price. But you can't do that unless you repeal the beast that's out there called the Affordable Care Act. Uh, one final question, Congressman, before I let you go, a different issue. Uh, the White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer is saying today that President Trump won't be re releasing his tax returns, uh, the tax day tomorrow, as all of our viewers uh, know for sure, because he's, they say he's still under audit president he's setting to refuse to share his tax returns around this election day uh, this tax day i should say well you know 
uh, how can, I'm not overly concerned with this, but I did come out in a town hall stating that I would support legislation for him to release that. Uh, every president has the ability to do that, or they've done it in the past. It's not mandated by law. It's not a constitutional requirement. But as some people that brought up to me, with the business dealings he has around the world, it might be more transparent so that we see what businesses um, uh, he has and make sure legislation is not um, interfering with that. And I think it would be a good gesture on his part to release him, like all other presidents have, of the modern era. And so um, we've signed on to some uh, legislation to support that. All right, Congressman, thank you very much. Uh, Ted Yo of Florida joining yes, us. Yes, sir. Uh, have a great day. Uh, appreciate it very much. Just ahead, the U.S. military options for